In today's video, in an ongoing series of Configuration as Code, we are going to be setting up our Operations Center. This is the third in a series of videos about how to use Configuration as Code for CloudBees CI controllers. If you haven't watched the previous two videos yet, the links for those videos are going to be down in the description below. So what we're picking up today is we are going to be setting up a job on our Operations Center to clone in the configuration bundles that are in our Git repository, making sure they are in the right place within the Jenkins home directory, and then making them ready to tie together with our controller. Let's get right into it. New item. We're going to enter an item name called load bundles. It will be a freestyle project. That's our only option. From an SCM section. Now this goes back to the very first video. The only plugin that we installed on the Operations Center other than install suggested plugins was the Git plugin. If you're going to your Operations Center and you do not see Git here as an option, the reason why is that you have not installed the Git plugin. So if you want to be able to follow along, you will need to install the Git plugin on your Operations Center. So I'm going to select Git. The repository URL is going to be the repository URL for this bundle. So I don't have to have a separate repository for every controller that I'm going to set up. I could have just a single repository, set up folders, you'll understand why in just a moment, and then have the files there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this configuration, paste that in. The branch that we're building off of is not master, it is main. Let's make sure that's true. Yep, so main is my default branch. And now we need to add a step because now we're just hooked up to that repository, but we need to do something. So in my case, we're going to do an execute shell. And the command that I'm going to run is actually two. Let's do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a copy recursively of the CC2 directory into Jenkins Home JCASC bundles store. JCAS bundle store is the special directory within the Jenkins home directory on the operation center where all the bundles are stored. So if you weren't doing this with an SCM and instead you were just going to be pushing files into a location, this location is Jenkins home JCAS bundle store. This is all over in the documentation. So this copy line could be any number of variations, but since I only have a single folder right now, I'm being explicit in how I'm copying things over. You'll come up with the way that you like doing it the best. Now, the second line, the find is purely just an output so I can see what's actually contained inside of that JCASC bundle store directory. You could do that. You might not want to do that. It's your choice. But I just want to take a look at what's there. That way I can verify that, okay, all the files are there that I expect to be there. I'm not looking at the contents. I'm just assuming that if it got the files from the repository, and I see the files, then I know it's ready to go. Let's go ahead and click on Save. And let's do a build now so we can see what happens. We'll come down here. Let's watch the log. Okay, so it did the copy. And now we can see here that when the find was run, we can see varlib Clobby's core OC, that is the Jenkins home by default for a CentOS based in installation. I have JCAS bundle store, and then I have the directory CC2. And then within CC2, I have bundle, Jenkins, and plugins. So all of the files are there that I expect to be there. Another variation of this that you might want to consider doing. Let's go back up here real quick. Go to load bundles, configure. So I'm just going to do the find, that, that's okay. But now let's do a cat of slash cc2 slash bundle yaml. Again, this is on the operation center, so the only people being able to run jobs on the operation center should be people that are administrators. If that's not true in your case, then probably this isn't that great of an idea, but I want you to see this as a potential option. That way you can verify a little bit differently. 
Let's go ahead and build this now. Let's take a look at the second run. And we can see here, not only do we have our find, but we also have a cat of our bundle. And we can see that, oh yeah, that was version one. The reason why this cat can be useful is because over time, it's like, wait, I made changes to my plugin YAML or my Jenkins YAML, but the changes aren't being reflected. Well, if you take a look at the bundle, if you forgot to increment that version number, this would be a quick way of knowing that, oh, well, according to the operation center, the bundle number is this. Oh, right, I forgot to bump my bundle number. So again, if you want to use this, great. If you don't want to use it, great. It just gives you the visibility to understand quickly what's going on inside of the file within that bundle. So this was the first step. We needed to get the files out of that repository, since we're using SEM, and into the JCASC bundle store directory inside of the operation center. Now, that folder did not exist, but when the process ran, it created it for us. The second step that we need to do, we'll go back up to Operation Center, Manage Jenkins, and then let's take a look at Configuration as Code Bundles. And this is where we are going to set up our mapping. We can see that CC2, and this is just because this is really large, let me back it down just a little bit, that's still readable, good. So this availability pattern is how we map our controller to our bundle. And in this case, again, all of this is over in the documentation. My availability pattern is controllers slash CC2. I'm going to click on save. And you might not understand where that came from, but let's take a look. I have a controllers folder and I have a CC2 client controller object. So by following that path down, and I'm being explicit here, there's other mappings here because it says pattern. So there's other ways to do it. Take a look at the documentation. But I'm just being explicit here with controllers slash CC2. I don't need to put a leading slash, that's inferred. So positionally, the CC2 client controller object is under the controllers folder. If for some reason I had not put CC2 in the controllers folder and it was at the top, then the definition would just be CC2. But in my case, it is controllers slash CC2, and we'll click on save. And one final thing, let's go back over to our CC2 object, and let's go to configure. You'll notice this section right here, configuration as code. And you can see here that the CC2 entry is here. Now, since I did basically a hard mapping, I did controllers slash CC2. I don't really need to specify it here. This would just be doubly defining what's necessary. So in my case, I'm not going to make an explicit setting here, but I could. I could set it to CC2, and this would work just the same in this specific case because based on the definition that we just saw, controller slash CC2, it's going to be exactly the same thing. So I'm just going to leave that blank. So as a recap, as we went through the operation center setup, we created a freestyle job, we cloned in from our Git repository, we put the files where they belong. In this case, it's Jenkins home slash JCASC bundles store. We took a look at it, looked good. We went back into our managed Jenkins and configuration as code bundles, and we assigned the CC2 bundle to controllers slash CC2. We also took a final look at sort of the optional thing we could have done directly on the object itself. We could have also selected, instead of leaving it blank, we could have selected it CC2 and then gone from there. But that's where we're gonna end up for today. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to Cloudbees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there is new content available on Cloudbees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.